Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to create a simple Twitter bot using Python to like, retweet and follow other accounts. To do this you'll need a Twitter account, you can use your own or set up a new account for your bot, whatever suits your needs. You'll need to go here to apply for an account. You'll have to answer a few questions about yourself and what you intend to use the API for. I'll leave the link in the description. Once you've got that sorted, you'll need to set the consumer key and secret and the access token and secret as environment variables to use in the code. Now you need to install the Tweepy package. We'll use this to interact with Twitter. Then in our main.py file, we can add the import for Tweepy. And we're also going to need to import OS for reading our end variables. Now we can set up the auth to connect to Twitter through Tweepy. Here we set up the OAuth handler using our consumer key and secret. Then we set the access token using that and the secret. Then we can create an instance of the API to use, passing in the auth handler. Now for this example, we're going to want our bot to run continuously at set intervals. There are a few ways of doing this, but for this example, I'm going to use the built-in sketch module, mainly because I've never used it before and I wanted to try something new. So we need to update our imports to bring in sketch and time, and we'll also bring in date time to use later. Then we can create a new scheduler using these imports. We'll make use of this later to start scheduling our functions, but first we need a function to schedule. First, let's add some variables we'll need in the function. Tweet IDs will be a list of, as you may have guessed, tweet IDs. We'll track these so we don't try and interact with the same tweet multiple times. Tweets per query is the number of tweets we'll get returned from our query. Increase or decrease this as you see fit. And account names will serve the same purpose as the list of tweet IDs to stop us trying to follow the same account twice. Now we can add the function to run our bot. The SC parameter is the schedule. We'll need this to repeat the scheduling. Next, we need to add our query. There's a lot going on here, so I'll go through it step by step. First, I'm searching for tweets containing the word Python, as that's the content my bot will focus on. Next, I'm excluding a few accounts, Eric Idle, John Cleese, and Terry Gilliam. Monty Python is very popular, and I don't want that interfering with my results. In the same vein, I'm then excluding the word Monty to try and reduce the amount of tweets from others that might be about Monty Python. Then I've set a minimum amount of favourites and retweets. This will only include tweets that have met that threshold. And then I filtered out native retweets. That's people retweeting their own tweets, as that could bring through older tweets that we might not be bothered about now. This is followed by the since filter using our date value to only get tweets posted in the last day. Finally, I set the language to English given I'm English and naturally too useless to learn any other languages. You can add other filters in here if there are specific accounts or words you want to filter, for example swear words, but there is a 1024 character limit. So if you exceed that, you may want to filter out things after you've got the results instead. The next step is to query the tweets and iterate through the results. Here we're calling the search function on the API we created, passing in our query. Then we're creating a for loop to iterate through the items. The first thing we want to do in the loop is to check if we've already interacted with the tweet by checking our tweet IDs list we created earlier. We'll be adding things to it later. Then I'm going to check the number of hashtags in the tweet. If there are more than three, I'm going to ignore it because I hate it when people add loads to their tweets. If the tweet passes those checks, we want to use it. Now we're going to retweet and like the tweet and we'll add the ID of the tweet to the list of tweet IDs we created earlier. Then if this same tweet gets returned next time, we won't try and interact with it again. You can filter out tweets based on anything you want here. Just remember we return a set limit of tweets. So if you're filtering out a lot, 
you want to increase the number of results. Finally, I want to follow the user that wrote the tweet. We'll check against the list of account names we created, and if the name isn't there, we'll follow the user and add the name to the list. All that's left now is to update our use of the scheduler. So at the end of our script, we need to queue up a function and tell the scheduler to run. We call the enter function on the schedule, passing in a time delay to wait before running the function. This code example, I've just set a minute, but you may want to schedule it to run every 15 minutes, half an hour, whatever you're wanting to do. The second parameter is the priority, and given it's the only thing we're doing, it has a priority of one. We then give it the function to schedule our run bot function. And the final parameter is any arguments we want to pass to run our bot function, in our case, the scheduler itself. And at the end of our run bot function, we queue up the function again, sort of like a delayed recursion. This might not be the best way of running the code at intervals, but it does work. Now you can simply run the main.py script and the bot will start running. This is a very basic example and there are tons of improvements that can be made, such as making use of a database to persist data between runs, deploying the code to run a scheduled lambda instead of running things locally, things like that. You could also improve the queries, add multiple queries, whatever suits your purpose, not to mention some error handling to keep things running smoothly. If anyone's interested in a more complete example, let me know in the comments and I'll do a more in-depth end-to-end project example and get it deployed to AWS. I'll leave a link to the source code in the description below. Thanks for watching.